This video is only 10 minutes of a 50 minute conversation. The rest of it is on any one of these podcast platforms. Or you can go to bermcannon.com forward slash adventure and listen to it right from the site. This conversation with take everybody back to 2001, I think it was. It could have been 2000, 2001. And it was my very first motorcycle race, Atalanto GP. And I was really scared, nervous. This is a whole new world for me. Uh, there was probably a th over a thousand riders uh, at this race. And uh, I think we had unclassified in the morning. And uh, I was on a, uh, a, I think the brand new uh, WR250F. And everybody has to realize back in this day, the entire planet was riding two strokes for the most part. Uh, unclassified went, and I think I started to walk the course where the mud jump was, uh, and there's just hundreds of people. This is the glory days. Everybody had money, it was a good economy, and I'm hearing all the buzzing and the, the buzzing bees, just noise. And all of a sudden something happened, and what happened was I started to hear kind of a rumbling. And I remember it was very distinct because it was a motorcycle, but it was a deep bass and it was a rumble, right? And I'm like, what is that? And I, and I couldn't see it. I tried looking, you know, everybody's coming through the pack and I just hear this, you know, this, this droning sound. And I was like, what is this? It really intrigued me. So I'm looking and I see this guy on a bike and it's, and it's a red bike. And I'm like, oh, that's a Honda. But what is that? What kind of bike is that? And coming around the corner near me up into the bank is Johnny Campbell on the XR650R and you blow this berm out with the sound of thunder four stroke. <laughs> and I stood there and it changed my, well, it didn't change my life, but it affected me in a way where I looked at this bike that this guy was riding, because I didn't know who you were at that time. And I said to myself, that is the baddest bike on the planet. And <laughs> It was the, whatever it was, 2001 XR650R. Johnny was at the GP training at that time. And what, when was the race in the, the month? Was it in fall? It was, it was early February. Okay. Atlanta was always like the first weekend in February. Okay. And uh, so here we begin this uh, podcast and this video. And for you guys watching the video, I'm going to put this teaser up. Um, and we're probably going to go 10 minutes in, but the rest of it will be on the podcast. So, Johnny Campbell is 11 time Baja champion. Is it 11 yeah. or 12? I have 11 overall wins. Okay. Yeah. So, um, there it was. It changed my life watching that bike, watching you. I followed you then into Baja, and I don't understand how I got the term the dominator. But I think what I was told was it was people in the mix of racing that the Honda XR650R was just dominating Baja. There wasn't a bike that could touch it. Danny Hamill was on a two stroke, uh, the 500. And just let's, let's start there. Let's talk about the XR650R and Bruce's vision uh, man, I have so many questions. I don't even know how to like <laughs> psych them up or dice them up. One at a time. One at, one time. at a time. So let's start with, um, let me pull my questions up here. We'll, we'll start with Bruce and his vision and, and what, because obviously I've heard you say this 650R that they don't make anymore. They make the 650L. It was Bruce's vision. Tell me about that. What was his thoughts on that bike and, and what did he want that bike to do? And do you think he was successful at it, obviously? Well, to talk about that bike, you can't talk about it without seeing where the development came from. Okay. You know, Bruce uh, came to Honda in the early 80s, around 82, and, you know, quickly was, you know, 
noticed by management and stuff of his uh, his skills as a, an evaluator, and also you know he was a Baja champion and racer then, and so he and Chuck Miller they raced the XR 500, and that was you know that was a, a legendary bike, and then that graduated into the XR 600. Mind you, these were like really big trail bikes. They weren't necessarily a race bike, uh, but we can make them race. And so those bikes were highly successful. And I came into Bruce's hands in 1992. Uh, I was 21 years old. He saw how hard I worked and my work ethic and stuff. And I started riding XRs then. And soon when I, learned about the four stroke and Bruce taught me everything. I mean, I went to his house in Riverside and he taught me how to split the cases and how everything works in a four stroke. And I had some knowledge because I worked on Volkswagens, but that was monumental in this whole like uh, heritage because when I started racing the XR600, quickly once I got up to speed, we found the limitations of being able to get rid of the heat. You know, we could, in a stock trim bike, you can ride it pretty hard all the time, but you were limited in horsepower. So we would build the bikes bigger to compete with the KX500s and the two open two strokes. Uh, but the problem was when we'd build them, they'd go, they'd go really fast, but then they'd slow down because the heat, they couldn't get rid of the heat and the air cooling, really? even, even, with the, huh. even with the oil cooler, everything. So we'd burn out ignitions, the bikes would, be, they would slow down slower than a stock bike. And so during those 90, the 90 periods when I was riding it, we were very limited on how much horsepower we could build and get away with having a, a good bike the whole race. And so I was getting beat. And yeah, I didn't have as much experience as a lot of the guys I was racing against and stuff. But Bruce knew the limitations of the XR because he'd been with it for a long time. So you know, fast forward to about the mid nineties when they started saying, okay, we need to revamp the XR. And, you know, nobody knew, nobody knew what was gonna happen or whatever. And this bike was in development for quite some years. And the first time I rode it, the prototype XR650 was right around probably 97 or 98. And the bike wasn't, anywhere close to being great, but it was water-cooled. It was a 650 long stroke motor. And I rode that motor and I told Bruce, I go, get me this motor and I'll win every race. <laughs> That's awesome. That you had that much confidence when you rode that. It was good. What, where did you ride it? Do you remember where you rode <laughs> it? I think the first time I actually rode that bike was in Dove Springs. Wow. Yeah. Okay. We were doing a confidential test out there and, and uh, they let me ride it. And then the chassis was really weird when they were developing it because they were huh. trying to do, I think they were trying to do some like mono backbone alloy thing and it, and it just wasn't working, you know? And so they had to go and revamp the chassis a few times actually huh. to, to where it is. So, so um, I want to make sure I don't miss any of these. Okay. So, um, obviously, uh, my next question was, do you still have an XR650R? He does, and, and I'll get some footage of that uh, at the end here. Um, do you still ride it? <laughs> no, I have one XR650R left. Uh, it's the bike that we won the Baja 2000 on. And the bike was, uh, you know, it was just that race in general was like kind of the pinnacle of, of, and the epitome of Baja racing. It was a, it was over 1600 miles. It took our team um, almost 31 hours to complete. Wow. It was like 30, 58 or something. And uh, I rode six different stints during that time. You know, the team was myself, Hengeville, um, Tim Staub, Craig Smith, and it was, it was just a phenomenal event because it was so long and, and I love those long peninsula runs. You know? Oh yeah. And that bike was just built for it. Huh. You know? It was just absolutely great. 
Hey, if you guys are new to my channel, here's a couple videos that can show you what exactly I do here. I take people places, plain and simple. So join me. Let's go Baja right here or High Sierras. See you on the next one.